All right, geodatabases and feature classes part three. Now, I didn't stress this enough in the last video. Before you go into editing a new feature class, make sure that you're comfortable with your fields and subtypes and domains. These are much more difficult to change once you start editing. So kind of confirm that your feature types, uh, are, sorry, your, your uh, subtypes, your fields, and so forth are, are good. All right, so we're happy with that. Now let's create, uh, go into ArcMap <clears throat> and add in our new feature class. It's so going to add data. Make sure I'm in the right spot. There's my Park Geo database. Inside the feature data set, I'll find trails <clears throat> and add that. Now notice right off the bat that my subtypes show up as different colors. So it scanned, found those subtypes, and automatically created some colors. Of course, I don't really like these, but it's trying to be helpful. Arc's trying to be helpful in distinguishing these different subtypes. <clears throat> so before we go into editing, there's a few things I want to say about editing in ArcMap. First of all, you always want to edit in the same coordinate system that your feature class is in. So if you recall, I'm in Wisconsin Transverse Mercator, NAT83. If I look at the properties of my data frame, I'll see that I'm also in Wisconsin Transverse Mercator, NAT83. So those match. That's good. Otherwise, I could end up with some uh, errors associated with the on-the-fly projection um, that you are going to lose some of the accuracy that you hope to retain in your data. Next, I want to set up ArcMap for editing. So I'm looking up here at the toolbars and seeing uh, the toolbars I have. I want to make sure I have the editor toolbar, and I also want to make sure that I have the snapping toolbar. So I, I've got one but not the other. I'm going to go to a gray area, right click. Here's where I could turn on and off the editor toolbar. Uh, I'm going to turn off the layout one for now, make some room, and go down and add the snapping toolbar. OK, kind of move that to where it's in a good spot. <clears throat> Okay, we'll talk about these options here in a moment for snapping. Next, I noticed that the editing, editing session, uh, or editing right now, all the tools are grayed out. In order for us to edit, we need to go into an edit mode. And within an edit mode, think about that as uh, this uh, in-memory set of edits that until I save are not committed to the geo database or to file. So make sure, given that uh, RGS tends to crash a lot, that you save often, that you don't edit for an hour and then cr have a crash and you'll lose all your work. So once I'm in an edit session, I can create and undo and then every, no every so often commit that to the disk by hitting the save button. So I'm going to go into editor here and start an editing mode. Now if I've got several shape files or feature classes in my map, I'm going to get this uh, kind of uh, warning box that's going to ask me which workspace I want to edit in. In this case, I've got write permissions to both the, the counties file and the trails file. And it's actually chosen the counties to make editable. Well, I can see with this tiny little pencil here in this icon. That's not the one I want to edit. So I'm going to switch to trails. And notice down here at the bottom that that workspace is my geodatabase. So it's saying anything within that geodatabase I could edit. Uh, I can't edit across workspaces, so I have to choose between the two. So in this case, I obviously want trails. Uh, it's giving me here a, a little bit of a warning that counties, its uh, coordinate system does ma not match what I have in my current data frame. But since I'm not editing the counties, I can ignore that. Uh, again, I want to make sure that I'm editing in the same coordinate system as my feature class. So if this was trails, then I'd have an issue. So I'm going to continue. So now I have um, in an edit session, I notice that several of the tools for the editor are now available. Now to actually create new features, I want to open um, the feature templates, which is this last uh, little icon here. If I click on that, I'm going to see the f uh, feature classes that I can edit and the types uh, of lines and so forth that I can create. And since I have subtypes, I now have these different options. So I can automatically uh, get all the attributes for that I set for sub each of these subtypes. So let's zoom into our map here and start digitizing something. So these are some mountain bike trails. Uh, again, from the air photo, it's not clear. But I know this one's gravel, and then this one here is dirt. So let's do both of those. So I'm going to start with the gravel. And then once I click on that, I see down here I've got several different types of objects that I can create. 
I don't know why it's giving me these options for these other primitives, but it's the line option that I want. And then I can start editing with a single click. So, so I'm going to start as an endpoint, and then every time I want a vertices in order to well define that, make that curve well defined, I'm going to click and add a vertice. Now you have the choice here of whether or not to create a, uh, a separate line for this segment or keep going. I'm going to keep going and show you how to snap the two in a moment. We want to make sure that everything's well connected. And later that'll be an issue when we start to work on topology. Okay, I'm going to imagine this is the end, and I'm going to double click here to stop editing that line. So now I've created a new gravel trail. If I open the attributes for that, again, back up in the editor, uh, I can see that it's used all the defaults that I've set for that subtype. With the four, it's a gravel covered trail, um, and the type, the subtype is gravel. Now I'm going to change this. That's a wider trail, let's say, so I'm going to go to six. So I'm going to I'll go from the defaults and I'll leave the name blank for a moment. Okay, let's imagine I've edited for a while, so I'm going to go up and I'm going to say save edit. So now that's become permanent. Now let's do this gravel trail next to it. So I'm going to switch back to my uh, featured uh, templates here and I'm going to go and I'm going to create a dirt trail. Now what I want to do is I want to start that. So I'm going to dirt line and I want to start that make sure that I'm connected to that gravel trail there. Now, As I get near things you can notice this box pick up, uh, box uh, up here with uh, different things next to it. So that's saying trails vertex meaning it's going to snap to the vertex when I start this and those will be exactly the same point. Now, I can change what I can snap to by going up to different options up here. I can have point snapping, end snapping, vertex snapping, and edge snapping. There's, there's no hard and fast rules here, but in general, uh, I'd like to snap to other vertices or to endpoints and not necessarily to edges. So you can toggle these by turning them on and off. When they've got a blue box around them, they're active. So I'm just going to leave the vertex and end snapping. So as I move around, I can snap to only ends and vertices. So I'm gonna find the nearest vertice to this trail beginning and I'm going to start there and digitize my dirt trail as accurately as I can. I'm going to have another junction here. So double click to end. Now I have that dirt trail. Check my attributes. Set the name. The width this is going to be four feet wide. Dirt cover trail. The rest of that's good. All right, let's do one more. Go back to my feature templates. Gravel, or sorry, dirt, line, and then I'm gonna snap to that endpoint. And imagine going through the trees here and add that final line. And then finally, I'm going to stop edits. It's going to ask me to save. And I've created now three lines, two dirt trails, and one gravel trail that are all well connected together. So that's the second, um, or sorry, third video on how to create uh, geodatabases and feature classes within them. All right, enjoy.